Hi, welcome to the Holes of Him Up podcast show. And today, boys and girls and children around the world, it's story time. And this story was picked out by a friend of mine called Emily. Rumple Stillskin. There was once a miller who was very poor, but he had a beautiful daughter. Now, it fell out that he had occasion to speak with the king in order to give himself an air of importance. He said, I have a daughter who can spin gold out of straw. The king said to the miller, That is an art in which I am much interested. If your daughter is as skilful as you say she is, bring her to my castle tomorrow, and I will put her to the test. Accordingly, when the girl was brought to the castle, the king conducted her to a chamber, which was quite full of straw, gave her a spinning wheel and a winder, and said, Now, set to work, and if between tonight and tomorrow at dawn you have not spun this straw into gold, you must die. Thereupon, he carefully locked the door of the chamber, and she remained alone. There sat the unfortunate miller's daughter, and for her life of her, and for the life of her, she did not know what to do. She had not the least idea how to spin straw into gold. And began, began more and more distressed until, at last, she began to weep. Then, all at once, the door sprang open, and in stepped a little mannequin, who said, "Good evening, Mistress Miller." What are you weeping so for? Alas, I've answered, I answered the maiden. I've got to spin gold out of straw. I don't know what to do, how to do it. The mannequin said, What you, what you give me a spin, if it for you, it for you? My necklace, said the maid. And the little man took the necklace, sat down before the... Oh, I've lost my page now. Rumpel Swinstein will all come back. That is a matter of fact. We'll get there, never despair. Poor Rumpel Silsin, we've left him in mid air. What shall we do to him? I'll get back to the story soon. I'm sorry, folks. The little man took the necklace, sat down before. I don't know more time, do we? That's the trouble when you do it live. The book does not want it to take you for a ride. Spinning wheel, and well, 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 in a trice the wheel was full. Then he fixed another wheel, well, 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 trice round, and that was full, two was full. So it went on until morning, when the straw was spun, all the wheels were full of gold. Immediately at sunrise the king came, 
When he saw the gold, he was astonished, much pleased, but his mind came only the more avarice. So he had the miller's daughter taken to another chamber, larger than the former one, and full of straw. He ordered her to spin it also in one night, as she valued her life. A maiden was at her wit's end, and began to weep. Then again the door sprang open. A little mannequin appeared and said, What would you give me if I spin the straw into gold for you? The ring on my finger, answered the maiden. The little man took the ring, began to whirl again at the, at the wheel, and had by morning spun all the straw into gold. The king was delighted at the sight of the masses of gold, but was not yet satisfied. So he had the miller's daughter taken to a still larger room, full of straw, and said, This you must you do tonight spin into gold. But if you this must you tonight spin into gold, but if you succeed you shall become my queen. Even if she is only a miller's daughter, though he he thought he I shan't find a richer woman in the whole world. When the girl was alone, the little man came again, and said for the third time, What will you what will you give me if I spin the straw for you this time? I have nothing more that I can give you, answered the girl. Will you promise your first child if you become queen? Who knows what may happen, thought the miller's daughter, but she did not see any other way of getting out of the difficulty. So she promised the little man that he would do what he demanded, and returned he spun the straw into gold once more. When the king came in the morning and found everything he had wished, he celebrated his marriage with her, and the miller's daughter became queen. About a year afterwards a beautiful child was born, and the queen had forgotten all about the little man. However, he suddenly entered her chamber and said, Now give me what you promised. The queen was frightened and offered the little man all the wealth of the kingdom if he would let her keep the child. But the mannequin said, No, I'd rather have some living thing than all the treasures of the world. Then the queen began to moan and weep to such an extent that the little man felt so sorry for her. I will give you three days, said he, and if within that time you discover my name, you shall keep the child. Then, during the night, the queen called to mind all the names she had ever heard, and sent a messenger all, all over the country to inquire far and wide what other names there were. When the little mention came on the next day, she came with Casper, Melikor, Blazer, and f- mentioned all the names, which she knew one, one after the other, but every one the little one said no that's not my name the second day she had a maiden cries all made all round the wet neighbourhood for the names of people living there and suggested to the little man all the most unusual and strange names Perhaps your name is Crow Ribs, sh- Spindle Shanks, or Spider Legs. But he answered every time, No, that's not my name. On the third day, the minister came back and said, I, I haven't been able to find any new names, but as I came round the corner of the wood on a lofty mountain, there was a fox. Where the fox says good night to the hare. I saw a little house, and in front of the fa- house a fire was burning, and leaping on the fire, the indescribably ridiculous little man was leaping, hopping on one leg and singing, Today I bake, tomorrow I brew my beer, the next day I bring the queen's child here. Oh, lucky this, that is that soul doesn't know, that rump skin, still skin, is my name, ho, ho, ho. Then you can imagine how delighted the queen was when she heard the name, and when presently afterwards a little man came in and asked, Now, your majesty, what's my name? 
At first she asked, Is your name Tom? No. Is it Dick? No. Is it by chance Rumpelstiltskin? The devil told you that. The devil told you that. Shrieked the little man, and in rage stamped his right foot into the ground to the deep that sunk up to his waist. Then all, then all his passion, he seized his left leg with both hands and tore himself asunder in the middle. And that is the end of Rumpel Skillskin by the Brothers Grimm. I hope you enjoyed this story time. I may be bringing it back in rhyme. So children everywhere, sit down and not despair, for story time has ended today. I shall see you again one story time day. Good night, children. Ta-ta.